So sadly, my poor wee Sanya and SW2 so went to audio heaven. But what it does mean is... I've got to replace them with these. Hey, right, so basically I'll give you a bit of a background how I ended up having to buy new speakers. Uh, a few weeks ago, my wife phoned me um, while I was out and about saying she was trying to do a, an online meeting with her work and couldn't get the speakers to work. Tried to discuss, discuss it over the phone, couldn't figure it out, and then I just totally forgot about it, to be honest. Um, and then it was the other night, my daughter asked to play the PC and she asked if she could watch a YouTube video on it, and the speakers just wouldn't turn on. Basically, at the side here where the power button is, when you turn the thing on, little green light, came on for about 10 seconds, flickered, and then it just totally died. I have no idea what happened to them. Um, and I'm pretty gutted because I actually love these speakers and I've actually done a review on them be before as well. So I'll leave a, a pop-up in one of the corners if you want to go and have a look at it. But yeah, I'm a bit gutted. I've had them for about a year and a half. Don't get me wrong, they're cheap. Maybe that's the kind of thing you expect if you go to buy cheap speakers. Um, but I'm kind of interested to open this thing up uh, take the screws out and just see if anything's burnt out for something that could be replaced. Personally, I wouldn't do it, but um, uh, it'd be interesting to see if something's actually burnt out on it and if it could be could be fixed, maybe worth just taking it somewhere to get them fixed and could sell them on, but yeah, that's what it is. So yeah, basically I've replaced these now with the Edifier MR4s and uh, we'll go into a bit of discussion about those. We'll um, go into the website and have a look at the, all the details about it. Um, by no means any audio file, uh, and that's why I'm going to refer to to the website because uh, I'm sure you guys out there will know more about speakers than me. And uh, pretty safe to say, some I'll probably get some comments as well correcting me and stuff I've got wrong. But eh, I'm here to learn anyway. So yeah, I'll jump over an unboxing video, show you what's in the box, and just notice we've got a, a visitor in the bed. It's a soul man. Um, aye, get the unboxing done, and then we'll come back and we'll we'll go over the rest of the details. So we'll get this box cracked open and we'll see what's inside. Now it's nice to see that the speakers are well protected, plenty of polystyrene packing here. We'll take this out of the way and then the speakers themselves are all wrapped in plastic as well. A little bit of extra protection from uh, condensation and stuff. Just take these out of the way and we'll see what else is in the box. And in the corner here, looks like there's a bag of uh, additional cables. We'll have a look at those in a minute. I think that's everything. Oh, no, there's uh, an instruction booklet as well. I'd imagine the instruction, uh, instruction booklet will be in multiple languages. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's uh, as expected. Put it to the side, and then we'll have a look at the speaker cable. So I did actual cables himself that come supplied. So the first cable we have is a 3.5 to 3.5 millimeter audio cable, and that's roughly 1.7 meters in length. We also have our 3.5 millimeter audio to RCA cable. And again, this measures in around about 1.7 meters long. And then finally, we have some speaker wire, which come in a gold and silver color, so you know what's negative and positive for the speaker. And this measures in just over a couple of meters long. And the length of this is quite handy as well. It allows you to spread the speakers out in your desk quite wide if you, if you so wish to. Now we'll move on to the speakers themselves. And the first one we'll have a look at is the passive speaker. Don't expect her to be much in this, it is what it is, it's just a passive speaker. We'll have a quick look around the back. And there only should be the one connection, which is, yeah, that's a standard spring-loaded speaker connection at the back. We'll put this to the side and we'll have a look at the actual active speaker now. Again, we'll just get this out of the packaging. And we'll get a power cable out of the bag as well, so sealed and taped up. So this being in the UK comes with a standard UK plug, it's got some protection on it there. And the actual power, uh, power cable length is about 1.2 metres long. Obviously if you buy this overseas you'll have the, the power 
um, plug on it to suit your, your own electrical connections. Front of the speaker is made of plastic. Up the top here we have a, a one inch tweeter. We'll get onto that later on. There's something I need to talk about. And then in the bottom here we have a, a four inch woofer and it's got kind of carbon fiber design to it, which is really, really nice. Makes it nice and modern. Front aux connection here and headphones out connection. And here we have your power on button, dial, um, volume control knob, mode selector. And again, we'll talk about that later. Body's made of MDF wood, uh, which helps the resonance. And round the back, we can see that it's a, a rear ported speaker. So just bearing that in mind where, wherever you place them, it might affect the sound. Pay attention to that. So we've got a couple of control knobs here, one for the bass. Takes it down to mix, uh, minus six decibels up to plus six. Quite a good feel to the control knobs. The centers at the top, and the same here, we've got a, a treble control knob as well. And that goes the same, minus six to plus six decibels. And here we have your RCA connections, which is uh, unbalanced, left and right. And here we have TRS balanced, and I'll go into them later on. And then again at the bottom, we have the, the standard speaker wire connection. Also note that the power cable is hardwired in. Um, it would have been nice to have like the kettle lead, make it easier to install the cable, but that is what it is. Top measurement is 140 wide, height is 228 millimeters tall, and the depth is 197.5 on the active and 184 on the passive. Now bear in mind, there's extra controls and buttons and stuff like that, so that's why there's a difference in the, the depth. At the bottom here, we have some rubber feet. I'll just test to see if these leave black marks in your nice white desk, which some things have done in the past, and I'm delighted to say it doesn't do that, so that's a thumbs up. And uh, nah, that's a quick overview, quick unboxing of the speakers. What I'll also do for you as well is just uh, show you a little comparison between the, the difference in size between the edifiers and the, um, the Sanyans, and you can see there's a quite a substantial height difference. If I turn these to the side, if we can get it in the camera shot here. Mm, it's not very good. Uh, I'll put uh, it up this way. And you can see the difference in the depth as well. So, substantially bigger. But both, in my opinion, look just as good as each other. Both cracking speakers. So that was a, a quick unboxing. Not much to it. Wouldn't really expect too much inside the speakers, uh, speaker packaging. But what we'll do now is we'll jump over to the, uh, the actual website and we, uh, the actual website, sorry, and we can go over some of the, the specs and stuff. And like I said, I'm just reading this off the web page, not really clued up in this stuff at all. But uh, we have um, the top tweeter is one inch. And I said earlier on about, I'll, I'll come back to and speak to you about that. I've seen reviews about people measuring this, and I measured it myself, and it does measure out to be about um, three quarters of an inch, but you're actually only seeing the dome of the tweeter. I think if you opened this thing up, you'd actually see the rest of the tweeter, which probably would measure out to be one inch. So I'd be amazed if they put this on and didn't include a, a proper one inch speaker, but a false advertising. I don't think they would open themselves up for that, you know. Um, so I do believe that underneath it is a proper one inch uh, tweeter. Uh, mentioned earlier, we do have the four inch um, diaphragm woofer, um, MDF cabinet, which is designed for minimizing the acoustic resonance, which is quite a nice touch. And then it's all simple connections for mixers and so on. Um, going back to the Sanyons that I had before. Um, yeah, I, basically the Sanyons had multiple connections, had Bluetooth and had a, a USB in. So these unfortunately don't have that, but it does have everything that I personally need to hook up to the PC. Um, and then continuing on, uh, we also have got multifunctional knob for power, volume, sound effects. Again, I'm going to show you something on that. I'll show you a little kind of zoomed in video of something on that. Um, and then monitor and music modes to fit various scenarios. And again, that's all to do with the power button and I'll, I'll show you how that works. So getting into more of the details further down, um, it comes with a Class D amplifier. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. You, please feel free to let me know in your comments. And as I says, I'm here to learn as well, so you can tell me if, if that's a good thing. Uh, and the frequency can be lower to 60 hertz. Uh, what else do we have? 
so we've also got uh, these TRS balanced input jacks. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any equipment that I can actually take advantage uh, advantage of these. Maybe something in the future I'll get myself something and I can use them. But um, I believe if you're going to use these speakers for proper music uh, production, you'd want to go with something uh, go with something that that uses these. I believe it gives a more cleaner, crisper sound, more natural sound. There's no like uh, artificial enhancements or whatever like that. Um, and I've also seen people commenting that some of the hissing that you get on the, the auxiliary connection, the RCAs, these types of uh, inputs kind of reduce that as well. So again, it'd be interesting. Maybe, maybe people out there have actually got the speakers and you can comment on that and let me know if it does help. Uh, and then we come down here to the, the actual chip that's inside. Um, TSS5713 chip um, and it's got a built-in DSP to, com to complete the sound adjustment. Again, I can only imagine that's a good thing. And if we get anything else, goes on a more detail about the, the MDF for helping the resonance and the, I can actually kind of relate to that. As much as I'm not an audiophile, I actually used to build, I used to be a, a car auto electrician and I used to build sound systems in cars and one of them was big subwoofer boxes put in people's boots and it was, it was all made out of MDF. So, that, that one bit I do understand. Um, one inch silk diaphragm we kind of covered. I don't really think there's much more to say about it. Um, I probably could go over more and more of this if, if I knew what I was talking about, but this is purely just an overview, overview just to show you them and my opinion on the sound. And again, I'll do a little demo of that later on. But yeah, we'll go into some of the wee things I've have, uh, some of the little things I've discovered about the speakers and my thoughts and some sound samples. So for the setup that I have just now, I actually have a set of, I'll just show you these. Up to seven headset, that's my, my, my go-to gaming headset or what, or the headset that I use if I'm listening to music in peace and quiet, I don't want to disturb the house. So that comes with a little, a little wireless receiver that's just sitting Right underneath my monitor at the moment, and that's got a a three point five millimeter output on it. So the thing itself is a USB connection, and basically what happens is if I'm not using my headset, there's a bypass, audio bypass that goes through, comes out the three point five millimeter, and we normally, yeah, use that with your speakers. And I've got that currently hooked up to the back of this speaker using the the, the supplied RCA. The supplied 35 millimeter to RCA connection, so just to let you know how everything's set up. So it's great. Turn the headset off and the speakers kick in, which is why I love, well, part of why I love those, those the, that headset. At the front of the speaker, we've got uh, the control knob. Um, as I said earlier, it's got a couple of different functions on it, but it's actually one of the things that might put people off a wee bit. Um, is the fact that the volume control is notched. I think it goes up, I'll just count that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 notches, which means that when you're putting the volume up using the control on this, it goes up in steps and it can be quite big big jumps in the steps and quite a loud jump, if, if that makes sense. Um, it's not an issue for me because I personally control the volume on my PC just using little dial thing here to have my keyboard and it's a wee bit more accurate, a wee bit more precise and you don't get that, that, that jump but it's just to give you a heads up, you might not be using this for a PC, you could be using it for anything hooked up to a turntable, decks, whatever, um, all sorts of different audio equipment, you need to be aware of that. Um, at the front we've got an auxiliary input which is great for, for convenience if there's anything else you need to hook up to this uh, rather than the PC and you can enjoy the speakers using the auxiliary connection and then again you've got a, a headphone out jack at the front as well and again that's convenient if you're, you're actually using wired headphones or headset or whatever like that. Um, the actual button itself is a case of just uh, holding it down um, and it powers up automatically goes on to the the music mode when the lights lit it red. I think you get some enhancements with that chip we, we, we discovered there. Sorry, we discussed earlier on um, if it's on the music mode. Um, and then you just press it again. Light goes green and that's you in studio mode, monitor studio mode. 
Um, I'm going to play a couple of demos at the very end of this video between the two the two settings, and you can let, well you can tell me if you notice any difference. Um, the only bad thing is I'm going to record this using my phone, pointing at the speakers because the microphone I've got is a condenser mic with the bloody mics facing me rather than the speakers. So I don't know if it works so good. So I'll just use my phone and I'll set the phone quite close to the speakers and you can, you can hear for yourself. Um, at the back, we have the, the bass and the treble control. I found that I quite like music and stuff like being quite bassy and I've actually got it turned right up full to kind of get a maximum bass out of it. I mean, you're not going to get a huge amount of bass out of speakers this size, but it's pretty, for me, it's pretty punchy and it's just quite what I like. I've got that turned right up and then the treble, I've actually left bang on the halfway mark and it sounds good to me. Everybody's different. You'd probably fiddle about with it to suit your own kind of way that you like to listen to music or whatever. But, um... Yeah, so again, I mean, I don't think I've really got much more to talk about. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I will uh, let you listen to some of the, the samples. There you go, that was a couple of samples of music. Again, got to apologise. Done through my phone. I'm just a small YouTuber. I don't have all the proper gear, but that is what it is. Uh, you can let me know down below what you think of the sound, if it sounds any different between the two settings. But I'm glad I got a pair of edifiers, to be honest. I've kind of seen loads and loads and loads of stuff, good things being said about edifiers. I'm delighted I managed to get a set. Also delighted at the price, by the way. I only paid £90 for these. Everywhere you look just now, they're probably around about £119, £130, £129 I've kind of seen advertised. I got these for £89, £99 from Overclockers UK and I'll leave a link for that down below if you, if you fancy getting in there before they go back up to full price. I mean, like I say, I think I paid, I either paid about £60 or £70 for the, the Sanyan, so these are a bargain. Sound-wise, they sound phenomenal. The thing I can't get in my head around is that these things are advertised at 42 watts, 2x21. Um, they sound far louder than the Sanyan, so I don't know if there's maybe the, the advertising the Sanyans is a bit dodgy or something like that. I can't say a bad thing about those little Sanyan speakers. They, they were fantastic speakers and they, they did a job for me, but the sound off of these edifiers is far, far superior to them. Possibly because it's a, a well-established audio company that you're going to expect better, but they just sound far, far louder, far cleaner, far crisper sound off them. Um, and if you're not into 
like break the bank, pay silly money, go for these. They look good, they sound good, and at the moment they're cheap. And that's it. I'm looking forward to kind of getting to enjoy these. Hopefully I get more than a year and a half out of them. Fingers crossed. I'm pretty sure I will, to be honest with you. But uh, that's it. I hope you liked this. Um, apologies, as always, about the length of time between the videos. And uh, God knows when I'll see you again. Speak to you soon.